the referee for this match that I thought I'd bring up is Nick Patrick. Uh, do yeah. you have any specific Nick Patrick stories? Not really. Nick was always kept under control by his father, who was Jody Hamilton, who was one half of the Assassin's team. And Jody kind of kept Nick under control. Of course, he told him about things to do and not to do. Since he got him a job as referee, he said, hey, just don't go out and do anything outrageous because if he did get out of line, Jody would be the first one to straighten him out. I remember Jody Hamilton as one of the assassins and Tom Renesto, the other one. I think they were one of the greatest teams I ever saw, and they still probably in the top five now. The Andersons are our team, and they, they try to say some of these teams today are, are like them. I don't see it, but maybe I'm looking through a different lens uh, time-wise because the Assassins, I don't know if you ever – have you ever heard one of their interviews? If they never did, raised their voice. They never raised their voice. And they talked in such a way that, they, that there was an element of danger just in their voice. Cause, and they were very, very well-spoken. I got to tell you, this is one time. I hitchhiked to a town one day because my car broke down. It was Carrollton, Georgia, and I had just started. And I was behind all the other guys because I'd left late in my car. It wouldn't crank or something. So I got to get to this town. So I'm hitchhiking, and this guy stops and picks me up, and he's a wrestling fan. And he's going to Carrollton. And I, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to Carrollton. He said, I am too. Really? He said, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to the wrestling matches. He said, I am too. He's a big fan. He knew who it was. I didn't know that when he picked me up. So he's telling me, he says, let me ask you something. You know, a fan, when they say, hey, let me ask you something. I went, what? He looked around, well, just me and him in the truck. And he looked around like somebody's listening. Like, who's <laughs> going to be listening? He said, them assassin fellers, who are they? And I went, oh, boy, I wish you hadn't asked that. <laughs> he went, why, why? I said, now, don't tell nobody that I told you this. And he says, what? I says, they are wanted for murder out in California. They killed this guy and they had to leave. <laughs> so they came to Georgia and put on a mask. Really? I said, yeah, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody because, you know, the FBI is looking for him and everything. Oh, I won't. I won't. I won't. So when I told him that, I know that's the first thing he's going to say when he got out. He said, hey, I, I brought that Dutch Mantel. I said, my name was Dutch Mantel then. He brought him there. He, I, I know he told his friends right when he got out of the truck. So the old man who picked me up, this is a true story. I noticed that I hadn't, you know, he used to say, hey, or hello, or what are how you doing? But I noticed he hadn't come around for about, I don't know, a month or two. And I went to my car one night. And his, this guy was out there, and he says, hey, Dutch. I said, how you doing? He said, you know that guy that picked you up and he was hitchhiking that time and brought you here? I said, yeah. He said, he was my father. I said, yeah, how's he doing? He said, well, he, he died. That's why he wasn't there. I said, what happened? He said, well, he just got sick. He passed away. Boy, he thought a lot of you. He did. Well, I thought, you know, I, I enjoyed riding with him. I'm glad he gave me the ride. You know, well, what are you going to say? And he says, but I just want you to know one thing. What? He never told anybody <laughs> <laughs> about that assassin team. Nobody. I said, oh, well, good for him. Now, you know, he told his son. Who does son tell? <laughs> oh, I had. I still laugh about that. That's a true story. <laughs> he never told anybody about those assassin guys. <laughs> you know, just because you mentioned Jody, uh, what was he doing in WCW at the time? Was he backstage? Oh, he was, what was backstage. Duty? He run the go position. He didn't help him book. He would just, you know, he was usually just there on TV. And I think he had a wrestling school too. Uh, he did the wrestling school on his own, 
And then he kind of combined that with WCW. They would send him talent. They would pay him for that. And he ran the goal position and he had a runner and whoever was up, he'd send them, go get them, tell them to be here. And he'd send you to go. So really, really Jody Hamilton was another, these old time rosters were tough bastards. They had to be because back when they broke in, you know, they'd be in a ring with the other tough bastards. So they had to be able to defend themselves pretty well or they wouldn't have made it. Because Jody was so big, I don't know who anybody anybody could take him down anyway. 